Usually farmers get their work done during the daylight hours, but at USDA's peanut research lab, they're working around the clock to produce the best peanuts man can make. The monitor's Ryan Nockan explains. When the sunlight moves out of Dawson, Georgia, researchers with the USDA peanut research lab move in to do what Mother Nature cannot. They have the male part and also the female part. Because the peanut flower possesses both reproductive parts, cross-pollination rarely occurs in nature. But at the research lab, combining different peanut genetics together is what they do best. Tomorrow, they will go into pollinate it. During the months of July and August, Dr. Charles Chen and researchers work late into the night trying to make the next variety of peanuts for farmers. They open up about five peanut flowers a night to take off the pistils, or male reproductive parts of the flower. You need to remove them, otherwise they will go into self-pollinated. Having only strictly female peanut flowers left, that then get left until the morning, when the other flowers begin to bloom by themselves, and will provide the new pollen to help the all-female flowers reproduce, making an entire new peanut with a unique genetic structure never seen before. So we try to combine the female desirable trait to the male. We can take one characteristic from one plant and try to bring that characteristic into some other characteristics of another plant. The researcher's goal is to find a new variety of peanut that will help farmers. Increase the yield and or reduce the input. If we can approach those two, then farmer probably can make a good profit. We started it in 2007 to ensure that our farmers and our processors have good varieties with good post-harvest characteristics that will be very efficient in production, processing, and leading to good consumer acceptance. After the flowers are pollinated, they are tagged to keep track of the certain breed and then form into pegs that dig into the ground to form a peanut. The other pegs uh, make a crosses between 11 and 22. The peanut is then planted into the research field and produces about 400 new seeds that are planted the following year for selection research. It's amazing to think of where it starts from. You know, one nighttime activity in the greenhouse with a single flower, and then a morning activity with another flower, and expanding those over time through a process of selection to finally provide the industry with a variety that, that it can benefit from. From the crossbreeding that happens in the greenhouse, it takes about 10 years to find a good variety that farmers can then plant on their farms. When we go through the generations, what we're looking for is to make selections out of the plots and keep making the selections that have improvements. And then ultimately we'll take those and try to get a peanut that's breeding true uh, and then advance that even further. Those that aren't breeding true or don't work out, we discard and stay with the ones that are working. So far in our breeding program, we have uh, two at the one line. They were hopefully going to release in a couple of few years. The researchers also look for varieties that are resistant to tomato spotted wilt and can produce a strong yield even through a drought. We want to start making selections or continue making selections for improved drought tolerance that a farmer can reduce the amount of water that he has to irrigate on a field and maintain the same yield and quality or that a non-irrigated grower can actually produce a higher yield with the rainfall that he receives. Our the future goal is uh, to develop a variety and can satisfy the three part like a farmer, consumer and then industry. And until that perfect variety is found, you can bet in the months of July and August every year, the peanut research team will be out under the light of the moon. For the Georgia Farm Monitor, I'm Ryan Nockham.